I don't know about the bottle girl, but I know them titties looking so good in my world because I, I love your titties more than a fucking summer night. Girl, I gotta fuck, I gotta suck. This baby, I know. You don't love me, I don't love you, but that doesn't show When it's just me and you here tonight I'm I just wanna suck them nipples on Won't you let me do it tonight? <sighs> Welcome back to the Little Fury Podcast. Uh, two episodes this week. Um, I was on the road last week. Very busy. Very busy with work things. Um, but I'm going to Michael's later, and we're going to record an episode. I have the hiccups. Uh, I have the hiccups right now. Um Hope everybody's doing well. Sorry for the wait. Tony, go lay down. My dogs are here. Go lay down, buddy. Go lay down. Um, uh, yeah, so you guys are going to have two episodes this week. I'm not going to be covering any of the rap beef here on this episode that's coming out right now today, Monday. Um, but I will be covering all that rap beef with Michael on Tuesday. So you get two episodes of the Little Prairie Podcast this week. Um, Hope you're doing well. Hope everybody's just out there shining, living the best life they've ever had, and uh, all that good stuff. Uh, I will talk about my comedy shows that I had in Cleveland, Ohio, and my comedy shows that I had in um, Buffalo, New York. Great crowds, great time. Uh, If you want to see me, I will be in Portland, Oregon, April 23rd, and then April 24th, I'll be in Seattle, Washington. Okay, so you can get tickets to those right now. And then my May shows are coming up. Denver, May 6th. Um, Then I'm in Kansas City, St. Louis, uh, Tampa, and North Carolina. Um, Sorry if I forgot any. You can get all tickets for all those shows at DanielPriori.sucks. Or just go to my Instagram and look at the link in my bio. But let's talk about the elephant in the room. My beard is gone. Yeah, my beard is gone. Um, So last night I noticed just from getting back from the road, uh, I haven't had a chance to see my barber and I'm going to be busy for the next few days. So I don't know when I'm going to be able to see him. So I said, let me just trim the overhang of my mustache and the underneath of my neck right here. So the neck, I get through perfect. I'm good to go. Feel great. Feel nice. Um, we've been having a problem in our bathroom. Uh, we have a flickering light that goes on and off. It goes light, 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 off, and then back, super bright, right? So I'm trimming, and I'm looking in the mirror. I'm very focused on my mustache because I can't fuck up my mustache. If I fuck up my mustache, I'm in a whole heap of trouble. So I'm focusing, focusing, focusing on getting this one patch of my mustache, the overhang of my lip. Okay. The fucking light flickers, scares the fucking shit out of me. And in the moment when I got scared, I went up like this. Ah! I got scared and I moved the trimmer up and I cut this whole part of my mustache off the point of no return so in that moment i had to shave the rest of my face as you can see up close and personal this is me with no beard um i'm self-conscious i feel ugly and i feel stupid um i'm so naked that I feel vulnerable. I feel like you could see all of my teeth. I feel like you could see every imperfection I've ever had in my life. And I cannot 
I cannot state how more self-conscious I am and how everyone's going to roast me on the internet. And I'm prepared for it. I'm not happy about it. I'm sad about it. So just take that into account when you make fun of me, okay? So if you're going to make fun of me, just know that it hurts my feelings. And you know what? Send this to somebody. Send this to somebody you know and love that you feel like, hey, maybe I shouldn't hurt their feelings today because they know they're ugly. Nobody in the world knows they're ugly more than ugly people. You know what I'm saying? We know we're ugly. Okay? And people are going to be like, oh, no, Danny, you're not ugly. You know what I look like right now? I look like Mr. Potato Head. Or like those, those, um, those goddamn fucking glasses. Remember those glasses you would get with like, uh, with the fake nose? The glasses and the fake nose? That's what it feels like right now that I'm walking around with glasses and a fake nose. So I'm hurting. I'm hurting. That's why I play guitar today, because I feel very sad. And I feel very mad. I feel like it was avoidable, you know? Do I still have all this beautiful fucking hair? I do. But the beard-mullet combo is where it's at. So now I don't know what to do with myself. I feel like trash. I feel like a mess. And this is for everybody out there. Who else feels like trash? You Are you trash? It sounds like an infomercial for, like, ugly people. Are you trash? Do you want to be less trash? I know I did. There's just some days where I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, man, that's a good-looking guy. And then there's some days I look in the mirror where I'm like, this is the ugliest person ever to grace God's green earth. You know what I mean? You just start pointing out all the perfection. You're like, oh, look at this pimple. Oh, it used to hide my, my double chins. It used to hide things. You know what I mean? And then you work your way down. You, you give yourself a body scan. And you're like, look at these fucking tits. Now I have tits. I have no beards and I have tits. And then you look further down. And you're like, look at that stomach. And then you look further down. And then you pull your stomach back a little bit so you could see your penis. It's very, very hard to deal with sometimes. I have more hair on my back than I do on my face. Okay? I'm very sensitive right now. I'm very I'm very weak. And it's brutal. It hurts my feelings. It makes me sad. It makes me want to cry. Okay? Moving on. Um I will say just a little mental health check in with me. I'm doing great besides hating my appearance. But who doesn't hate their appearance? You know what I mean? You know, you see hot people like, oh, my God, it looks so ugly in that picture. I'm like, I want to strangle the last bit of oxygen out of your fucking brain. I want to watch your life leave your body. Stop saying you're ugly. All right? Or you're self-conscious. You weigh six pounds. Okay? You have the body fat of a fucking lizard. You're toned. Like a goddamn shaved gorilla. All right? I used to have a beautiful beard. I was a beautiful, majestic panda. Now now I'm just a prepubescent bitch. I just can't handle other people's problems. You know what I mean? I could barely handle my own problems. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't talk to me about your problems. I, I can't handle my own problems. And it's, it's really not you. It's me. It's me. You know? I think, I think there should be a limit of how many problems you could really share. You know what I mean? At this point in my life, I feel like if somebody's not dead, don't tell me about it. Because uh, I'm not going to be able to relate to you. Because I have so many problems. Not that many, but I have I have a good amount. Um, yeah, so Buffalo, New York, great crowd. Great crowd. Like a hundred people showed up, which I love. Because, you know, smaller crowds, you get to try new stuff. You get to try new jokes and stuff. And it's not like, hey, we're going to tell everybody. I'm going to be like, okay, nobody was here really. So go for it. Um, Buffalo crowd was a great crowd. 
Um, I got to see some people that came back from last year and see the personal growth, um, which was nice, you know, to get some of that validation that my writing and my hard work is paying off. Um, I will say we drove by a factory in Buffalo, um, a General Mills factory. And when I tell you that the entire ecosystem runs through this thing, it has to because the entire city smelled like French toast. It smelled like cinnamon toast crunch. I was like, I need to move to this city immediately so I could just ride a bike and smell cinnamon toast crunch everywhere. It was the greatest smelling fucking city I've ever smelled in my life. Just knowing that these little fucking men were in there just fucking pressing hard and just getting that right mixture of cinnamon and that right s mixture of toast and s sprinkle the little crunch in there. And it was all coming out into the people. It was one of the f most fattest, blissful moments of my entire life. Just having this beautiful aroma of fucking cinnamon grace my nostrils. I was almost like was, I was almost like Brendan Fraser at the end of Whale. Like as soon as it hit my fucking nostrils, I was like ah, it just lifted off the ground. I said, "Leave me here forever." I think Buffalo's a city that gets a bad rap. You know what I mean? I always thought Buffalo was very big. It's not that big at all. But I thought it was like a really, really big city. But apparently it's not. Um, but, you know, the people there are great. I love the people in Buffalo. They have good food up there. So I think Buffalo gets a bad rap. That being said, they have really weird homeless people. And they're not like homeless people from New York City. Because the homeless people in New York City, it's like, hey, do you want some of this Chinese food? They're like, no, I'm vegan. I can't eat chicken. And I'm like, well, stay homeless, buddy. Because your priorities are really out of whack. You know? Like, New York City homeless people have priorities. They have beliefs and shit. You know, like things they'll things they'll they'll die for and all that stuff that have nothing pertaining to being or involving homelessness. Buffalo homeless, they're just trying to survive. Like I could walk up to any homeless people, I'm like, yo, do you love Jesus Christ? They'd be like, Hell yeah, give me five bucks. You know what I mean? I was like, yo, do you guys are you guys pro abortion? I'm they're like, No, nah. I'm like, Well, I'm anti. They're like, You didn't let me finish. I would let anybody do what they want with their bodies. That's what I'm into. Give me five bucks. That's what the Buffalo homeless was like. You know, every city I go to, I like to gauge the homeless. I don't know why. Maybe it's like I'm just f foreshadowing my, my future. But like in, in the minds of me and my inner, like most entertained self is I like to homeless watch. Like people do people watching. I do hobo watching. I like I like to watch homeless people in different cities. It's one of my favorite things to do. It might make me a little disgusting and sick, but that's just what it is. I'm just telling you the truth. I don't mind watching or finding my way around some homeless village and just seeing how it works. You know? There's a weird voyeurism to it. I'm not going to lie. But that's also like, you know, I watch to catch videos all the time with Chris Hansen. You know? And the voyeurism of that is fantastic. Who wouldn't want to be a fly on the wall and see somebody get confronted for that? You know? And I'm not comparing homeless people to Chris Hansen's people. I'm just saying I'm speaking on voyeurism. You know? It's like when my wife lays down in bed next to me and watches people crush goo for an hour. You know? There's, there's some kind of sensation that happens in her body. Where she's just watching people play with slime. And I let her have her moment. I let her enjoy what's going on. Because she deserves it. She's had a long day. If my wife watch, wants to watch slime videos, I'm not going to interrupt that. But my wife did say, hey, Danny, maybe we should cut back on the, on the Pred videos for a while. And I was like, I know, but I can't stop watching. I don't know why. They come up in my YouTube recommended. If, if it came up in my YouTube recommended, it's like the first video is 
how to get rid of diabetes in five minutes. And there's a to catch a pred video below it. I'll make my way back to the diabetes cure after the video. I'm locked in. I'm locked in right now. You know what I mean? And if that's a bad thing, so be it. I'm a bad man. Whatever. But I just like watching people get their comeuppance. Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Love you guys. What an amazing crowd. Performed at Hilarities. I think it might be my favorite club I've ever played in the two years I've been doing stand-up. Um, I think it is my favorite place I've ever been. It was kind of like The Shining. They had like a bunch of like whirly-twirly like walkways and different rooms. They had like a martini room and shit. Like I was scared. I was walking around in there a little bit by myself and I saw like a bartender behind me. He was like, you've always been the caretaker, huh? I was like, that's my grandpa dressed up in a tuxedo. What the fuck? Why is he here? He's dead. How is he alive and how is he serving me Jack Daniels? That's what that room was like. Best food I've ever had in any comedy club I've ever been in was Hilarities in Cleveland, Ohio. If you, any comic you ever like is doing a show there, go check it out. It's so fucking good. Because I remember, you know, you go into these these green rooms, they're like, hey, what's up, man? And it's usually like buffalo tenders and a side of fries. Like, that's like the go-to, right? Or like chicken wings, nachos, you know? This place had fucking ribeye steak, fucking fish. I was like, what the fuck? This is amazing. So I ate a steak, some mashed potatoes, and asparagus before I went on stage. And uh, I, I was locked in. I had a really good show that night. Um, I think I really did well. I think I'm just growing so much more in my writing and just, like, growing so much in, like, uh, I guess, I don't want to say maturity, but I'm trying to, like, be more mature, I guess. I don't know. I don't know, man. I'm 35. A lot of things happen in your brain, the way you process things, you know? Things kind of change. But, um, yeah, so Hilarities, Cleveland, Ohio, amazing crowd, great 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 venue anyone who's an upcoming comic you have a chance to go there i would say do it um if you just heard something my wife came in this is how me and my wife talk hey babe what's going on oh my gosh you didn't recognize me because i'm ugly can you come on for one second can you come on for, no i'll just hold the mic to you you don't have to be on camera yeah yeah, yeah. just talk for a second no, 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 no. She's saying no, but I need her. I need her. Just be honest with me. Just be honest with me. Does... Could I ever pull off not having a beard? <laughs> you, could, you, could, you could say what you want. It's your, it's your life and your dreams. It's not ideal. I know. And I'm so very... That's so nice, and I know it's so not true. I feel so ugly. I really do. I feel so ugly all day. Like, I've been walking by, like, mirrors. Every time I've walked by something reflective in our house, I can't stop looking at myself. It's like your mouth is so much smaller than I thought it was. My mouth is smaller? Yeah. <laughs> my beard makes my mouth look bigger? Yeah. And now I just have a tiny mouth. Look. Look at my tiny mouth. I have nice lips, though. I know. It's really bad. I talked about it for a while, how, how sad it makes me. We've, we've had to fix that light bulb in that bathroom for months. And we haven't done it. One's dead, one flickers, and the other one's flickering now. Makes me really sad. Let's get into the ads. You know, it doesn't make me sad eating stress-free and you could eat stress-free eat stress-free this spring with factors delicious ready to eat meals fresh never frozen chef crafted dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes that's right you heard it two count them two minutes 
Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan, Veggie, you name it, they got it. Uh, also discover more than 60 add-ons every week like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, beverages that help you stay fueled and ready to go. And also for all your springtime goals, because guess what? It's getting nice outside. I got to cut back. I got to be nicer with my diet and cleaner with my diet. In fact, it was like, hey, we got you covered, Danny. Don't worry about it. Um, you know, get chef-prepared meals on the table in two minutes with factors ready to eat meals. So you can get back to doing what you love this spring. You know what I mean? And, like, spring meals bring summer abs. I don't know. I just made that up. Looking for gourmet meals? Try meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, truffle butter, broccolini, and asparagus. Love broccolini, dude. I love broccolini more than I love broccoli. Um, no fuss and no mess. Factor meals eliminate the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat and savor the good stuff. I love that. I hate cleaning. It's like one of my least favorite things. And you guys are like, hey, Danny, they're taking care of you. What about us? They got you covered. Just give me a second. If you head to factormeals.com slash lops50 and use the code lops50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. All right? So that's 70% in savings there, brother. That's code lops50 at factormeals.com slash lops50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Factormeals.com slash lops50. Shout out to our friends over at Factor. Also, check this out. Everybody knows your boy likes picks. And guess what my favorite picks are to make? Prize Picks. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You pick more or less on two or more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Guys, the Knicks are the two seed in the playoffs, baby. All right? Jalen Brunson is my guy. Anything they put points, I'm going more, I think. That's just me, all right? Uh, I'm ready for the playoffs. Knicks are the two seed. We're going to play the Heat or the Sixers. Not excited about that, but I'm excited about riding with Jalen Brunson the entire playoffs. Um, and you, too, can get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks. As you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. Uh, listen, the playing round starts tomorrow. This is coming out uh, today, April 15th. You could get, go to prize picks right now and get ready. Get ready for the NBA playoffs starting tomorrow. I am so excited. I am so excited. I cannot tell you how much more excited I am because the Knicks are never good and the Knicks are finally good. Um, and guess what? You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You could turn $10 into 1000 with basketball. You got hockey playoffs are coming up. You know, there's so much going on. And listen, on prize picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. So get there today. All right? We need you to go check out prize picks. Um, everybody knows that your boy is down with throwing some cash around. And uh, thankfully, you know, understanding the game, you know, has made it so much more fun for me because sometimes I think I'm the smartest and sometimes I'm not. But you want to know something? I love prize picks because guess what? It makes it simple. The simplicity of prize picks is why it's the number one sports app in the world. Um, yeah, so this is what I need you guys to do. This is what I want you guys to do, and uh, let's get it popping together. Let's have some fun. Download the app today and use code LOPS, L-O-P-S, for a first deposit, uh, deposit match up to $100. So download the app today and use code LOPS, L-O-P-S, for a first deposit match up to $100. That's right. Um, again, like I said, let's have some fun with the Knicks. Let's have some fun with the Knicks this postseason. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm ready to rock. 
Download the app today and use code LOPS, L-O-P-S, for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Back to the show. So I'm going to see Michael today. We're going to talk about the whole landscape of rap music, where we're at, some of our favorite beefs of all time, um, what our favorite um, lines were of these new songs, who's had the best one. So that's going to come out tomorrow um, at 7 a.m. You guys are going to get this one today. Um, just trying to put more content out into the world and be able to have you guys, you know, be able to enjoy the Love Prairie podcast as much as possible. Um, you know, I'm working on music, working on this album. Very excited for my August tour. 100% music from start to finish. Um, and I can't express enough where I think that music's going to be able to take my career, but I just want to sit and let it happen organically. But I'm very excited. Um, what I'm not excited about is that my dog ate cologne. Um, so my dog ate cologne. So now he's just walking around. He smells like a douche. He's, he, he, he ate uh, Dior Sauvage. Not a lot. Of, not a lot of it. It was like one of those like sample like roll-ons that like my wife keeps next to her bed so she could smell me at all times. Do girls? Do any other girls do that? Like spray like their person's cologne or perfume next to them and you're just like I can smell them at all times it might be a sensory thing it's like when my wife watches slime for an hour it's a sensory thing you know what I mean but yes I will cut back on the Pred videos um, they are some of my favorite things to watch on the internet maybe I'll go back to like ASMR like people fixing things I don't know but I've been kind of locked in the worst is because I've been watching things and they've been affecting my dreams. That's the hardest part. I'm like, in my dreams, like catching preds. It's crazy. Um, my wife's in a book club, which made me feel really dumb. Because, like, my wife's in a book club. Like, she goes to the book club. I'm like, oh, I'm going to go out and just talk about farting. Or, like, my hobbies are like, hey... I'm going to go to Foot Locker. Like, I need more hobbies is what I'm saying. Like, I play instruments. Cool. Like, everybody plays instruments. I feel like, you know, I feel like I need new hobbies where, like, as a real person goes out and, like, does things. I want to be more active this summer. I, and mainly because I want to get a tan. I sat outside today. Um, it was 79 degrees in New York. Um, and it was very, very annoying, actually. Um to deal with because the sun was just blazing into my face and I didn't realize um hey babe what's going on anybody else do this my wife is opening a box right now what is that oh it's a side table cool no 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 you don't have to go just open it just take it out now just do it all at once okay all right is this something that I'm going to have to assemble Oh, thank God. The worst is when my wife, she's like, I bought a table. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to mess it up. I'm horrible at assembling things. I would say I'm one of the worst assemblers in the United States. Um, But, yeah, I don't know, because there's one thing. My wife asked me the other day. She goes, what's the biggest ick that you have of me? And I said the biggest ick is she works very early in the morning. God bless her soul. I feel so bad for her. But. When she wakes up, the entire bedroom is her bedroom now. So she'll be like, hey, lights are coming on. I'm putting music on. I'm getting ready. And I'm stomping the yard. And by stomping the yard is my wife will walk around the entire apartment and wake me up. And I think this is very like, um, like what's happening right now in this situation is a very womanly thing. She's like, oh, you're recording? I'm going to put a table together right here next to the microphone. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and you know, I have to learn to accept it. The thing that I've learned in marriage is that you just got to have to learn to accept, conversate and accept, you know, been doing yoga, trying to get more active in my life. Uh, but it's been very difficult. 
I did do yoga today. Oh, and I do have new Skims pants on. I bought new Skims pants. Loving body positivity, especially for the ladies. You thick ladies, you're not going to buy it. Thick Danny's going to buy it. Because I'll tell you this right now. These pants are so comfortable. Why is Skims not sent me stuff? I feel like I've been such an advocate for Skims. And guess what? Crickets. I don't hear a damn thing. I need more Skims in my life. So if anybody knows anybody at Skims, tell them to send them to me. Obviously wear them on the show. But I love them. Selena, with the paper and the crinkly plastic. Killing me. Oh, it's it's loud, baby. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. There she is. She's screwing in another leg of the table. She's screwing it in. There she goes. See, I think too much. I'm like, is this a power play? Is this a, like a power play by her? That's like where my mind goes. Like, Is she asserting dominance over me? What do you think? You're just putting a table together. That's it. Simple and plain. Love my wife. Love her to death. Selena's a Scorpio. I'm an Aquarius. And uh, we found out yesterday that we're not compatible. So, um, yeah, so we've been talking about a divorce based on astrology. Imagine if people didn't get together based on their astrology signs. Would you, if you knew that Aquarius and Scorpios weren't compatible, would you have married me? Yes. Oh my God. I'm so sorry about my beard. I know it's so ugly looking, but it'll grow back. When? Whoa. Hey. If you knew, if you knew how long I talked about how insecure I am. Like, I don't even want to go outside. Like, I don't even want people to see me. Tony, if you bite that new side table that your mom just bought, I will smack your butt, boy. If somebody can, like, put in the corner, like, a rage meter and, like, have it start green and go all the way to red, we'll be able to see. She's almost done, though. Third leg's on, and you guys know tables have four legs. It's a three-legged, so it's done. Okay, are you going to open up any other projects while I'm, while I'm here? How much more time do I need? There's other places in the house. We have a bedroom. We have a beautiful terrace. It's 79 degrees. You could do that. Baby. So pretty. God, I love you. Um, But yeah. So I'll be going to Michael soon. Going to be recording with him. Um, can't wait to talk about rap beef. Um, it's going to be one of my favorite episodes I think we've ever done all time. Uh, it's going to be super exciting. Uh, just waiting for Michael to text me back. Michael does this thing like where he, he'll be like, yeah, I'm going to Twitch. I'm going to stream. And then like tomorrow I'll be up at like one or two and I'll text him at like five and be like, yo, what up? Just waking up. So I'm just waiting to hear back from him, but I'm going to head over to Hastings soon and hang out, uh, with Michael. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about before I get out of here. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Hotel rooms. This is the thing I want to talk about hotel rooms. And my biggest problem with hotels. It's the biggest problem I've ever had with hotels in my life, and it drives me nuts. Why can't Uber Eats drivers come up the fucking elevator, dude? Why can't an Uber Eats driver just come up the elevator, leave it at my door? Why do I have to come all the way down to the lobby to get my food? It drives me insane. It defeats the purpose. Now that I'm already outside, I could probably walk to the place. You know, or, or I could take a, or I could order it from down there. I hate that. It drives me nuts. Really drives me insane. Selena, what's going on with the table? No, I love you. But what's going on with the table? It's done? Okay. 
you were putting some weird plastic lining on it. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm upset about Uber Eats drivers not being able to come up hotels. It drives me nuts. You know, and my wife's got me addicted to Vanderpump rules. You know what I'm saying? I can't believe that this season was starting to make me kind of feel bad for Tom Sandoval. In a weird way. In a weird way, I felt bad for Tom Sandoval this year. Okay? Because Ariana needs to get over herself a little bit. You know? Just being like, hey, if you're friends with him, we're done. I'm like, bitch, you guys film a TV show together. Okay? And guess what? Horrible thing that happened to her. I get it. Terrible. Absolutely awful. But you signed the contract... You're on the show. People have to coexist. And the weirdest thing was, is like, Sandoval, like, had everyone, like, do yoga at his house for a little bit. And then, like, Sheena was there. And then Sheena was, like, back-to-back with Sandoval. And, like, she was, like, crying hysterically. Like, Sandoval was her dad who, like, beat her her entire life. I was like, what is going on here? Leave all that stuff it makes for great tv but these people are very 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 into themselves katie i hate hate katie hate her guts something about her just sucks her energy is so doo-doo trash um really really gets me to a point of like losing my mind um schwartz i like um i love tom schwartz i think he's my favorite i'm gonna say something very controversial that's never been said before ever These guys are all gay, right? I think that's every hetero spouse response to when they watch these shows. I'm like, uh, you know, who's like the, Selena, what's the English guy's name? Who's a DJ? James Kennedy. Whoa. Two and two together. I like his girlfriend though. His girlfriend's nice. She's cute. I like her. Um, Lisa, obviously, I love Lisa Vanderpump. Um, but yeah, man, I think Sandoval's. I think I think we're over the Sandoval stuff for now, you know. And I started watching later on. My wife's been watching for years. All of these people have had sex with each other, and they all hang out. There's nothing good that comes from a bunch of people who have done the nasty hanging out with each other it's not good it's not good you know what i mean it's like you find out this one kissed this one this one went down on this one this one did this with this one you know and then it's like hey let's put all these people that have reached climax together in a room and i'm like this is gonna make great tv for me but these people are nuts will i stop watching vanderpump no if Selena were to divorce me now, I'd probably still watch Vanderpump. But, yes, she's got me into Vanderpump. I, she watches the Kardashians. I don't watch the Kardashians. There goes my skin sponsorship. That I just can't watch. That's just old people. Not. I watch it because you put it on. I don't watch it like, oh, we got a new episode of the Kardashians tonight. Like, when I heard, oh, we got Vanderpump, let's fucking go. I'm ready to pump. At all times. And I'm going to say this too. The newest episode of Quiet on the Set fucking sucked. And that song that Drake Bell made, I know it's a message. Really bad song though. Just musically. Sounds like shit. And kind of creeped me out. The video kind of creeped me out. I'm sorry. But that new episode of Quiet on the Set was so bad that it almost ruined everything else that was good about the Quiet on the Set series. But there is a new show that I'm watching, and this show is fucking awesome. It's called Shogun, okay? It's about samurais, and it's fucking badass. It takes place in the 1600s. My friend Ben was like, yo, have you heard of Shogun? I was like, no. He was like, I haven't seen it yet, but I heard it's really good. So I watched a couple episodes of, uh, of it last night. And when I tell you that this is my new favorite show on television, it's not even close. Shogun is awesome. If you watch television, you need to watch Shogun. Check it out. It's fucking fantastic. I love everything about it. Um, 
let's just be honest. Samurais are badass. I'm a big ninja guy. You know, I was a ninja for Halloween multiple times. Um, Selena, were you ever a ninja for Halloween? Were you ever like, because like, I remember one time I dressed up as a girl for Halloween. Have you ever dressed up as a boy for Halloween? What? Can you come here for a second and tell people? No, I don't. Can you come over here? Come here. Come here. Come here for a second and tell into the microphone what you were for your first Halloween ever. Come here. All right. So, Selena, what did you dress up as for your first Halloween? Groucho Marx. Groucho Marx. Okay. And for those that don't know who Groucho Marx is, I mean, you should know who Groucho Marx is. But for those that don't know who Groucho Marx is, he basically looked like Odd Job from 007, okay? So my wife walked around dressed up as this guy for her first Halloween ever. My wife was Groucho Marx. But other than that, you've never like been a dude. Would you ever bring back Groucho Marx? Maybe you should be Groucho Marx. Oh, what did we say we were going to be for Halloween? Yeah, we're going to be the bloodline for Halloween. Selena's going to be Roman Reigns. I'm going to be Paul Heyman. Uh, and Tony and Silvio will be the Usos. We'll go with the original bloodline. We'll do that. So, yeah, we're going to be the bloodline for Halloween. Oh, God, and we get to talk WrestleMania tomorrow, too. That's going to be amazing. Get to talk WrestleMania, rap beef. And nothing else that's going on in the world at all. Can I show that picture? This is this is my wife as Groucho Marx. Uncanny. What do you eat? What are you eating there? A chicken nugget? A breadstick. A breadstick? Looked like a cool chicken nugget. Do you remember those chicken nuggets that had cheese in them? Or like they came as the shape of dinosaurs? Oh, I love those. Dino dino nuggets. They were called Dino Nuggets. You just have breadsticks in your house? I don't think I've ever had a breadstick in my house. It was, I think, a cigar prop. Oh, it was a cigar prop. Okay. I would have let you smoke. When we have a baby, can I pick the first costume? Nice. You guys hear it here first. It's on wax. I can pick our first. Hey, Tony, Silvio. Let's do a timeout. Let's do a timeout, boys, okay? Let's do a timeout. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, we're going to be the bloodline. I'm excited. I think Selena's going to make a great Roman Reigns. Um, and then, um, see, here's the thing is, how do we paint our dog's faces? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah, that was the old Usos. I guess Silvio's fatter, so he'll have to be Jimmy Uso. And then Tony is skinnier, he'll be Jay Uso, and I'll be Paul Heyman. That's going to be awesome. I get to carry your belts around. She's very excited. What is that you're scraping now? Oh, yeah, I think that, I think our... Construction people, Selena made this really cool fire pit out of concrete. And I think either they stole it or they broke it. We can't find it. So if you find it, let us know. It's a circular bowl that she puts like butane in. I don't know what she does. She like makes this concoction of like like water and gases. Isopropyl alcohol. So she gets like this weird witchcraft juice. And she throws it into this hole and just throws like a match on it and it burns for like a long time. I didn't even know that was possible. But yeah. Um, yeah. So super excited. Two episodes this week. Very nice. And uh, guess what? We will see you guys tomorrow. Michael and I actually going to leave here like nowish and go film an episode with my brother Michael. Um, like I said, yeah. More content for everybody. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. Uh, we love you. We missed you. And we're back now. So, yeah, next week, well, next week there will be two episodes too. But this week there is um, the whole rat beef will be covered tomorrow. And, um, 
Michael is chomping at the bit to talk about Drake. But it's going to be great. Um, love you guys. Peace. And we are out of here.